she had to think to 40 different behaviours. So every time she's presented with one of them, she has to think about what that behaviour means and what she needs to do in response. And if you haven't picked up on it yet, it's two taps to the thigh. Every time Kate taps her thigh twice, she's asking Winnie to go in the water and see what she can find to bring back. And of course, every time Winnie does the behaviour correctly, once again, she's reinforced with some nice, tasty fish. <laughs> so this is how we build upon that nice, strong bond. As I say, between animal and trainer, this is also an excellent way of keeping our sea lions physically fit. Of course, we've got them in and out of the water. It keeps them mentally stimulated because, of course, they're having to swim around, look for the toys, think about the different visual cues. Out in the wild, Patagonian sea lions are not only a predator, but they're a prey animal as well. So they would spend a huge portion of the daylight hours hunting and looking for their own dinner. They also need to avoid predators of their own. So a very active lifestyle here at the zoo. We want to ensure that we keep them just as active and just as stimulated. Now, the fun and games are all good once we've built upon that bond between animal and trainer. We can then start the building blocks of training. And this starts with target training. Now, what Kate has in her hand is a target stick. And Winnipeg is trained to follow the target stick and touch it with her nose. Now, this is the building blocks for all the future training that then takes place. So it's a bit like learning to read and write. Once you've picked up the basics, you can then learn different languages, you can read more complex books, basics of maths, you can then go on to things like algebra. In the case of oh, training, once Winnipeg's picked up on the basic idea of touching her nose to the target, we can then get her to follow the target around. We can get her to swim across the wall and touch targets at the windows. You may have seen this in our displays. We can then move on to another form of target, which is the hand. So exactly the same way as the uh, the white stick, Winnipeg also sees her as part of the target and is trained in exactly the same way to touch her nose to it. So you can see, we can get Winnipeg anywhere we need her to be. We can give her a nice stroke over her body. And through target training, we can then move on to slightly more complex behaviours, cross-country behaviours or behaviours that we use to keep our sea lions physically fit. And a great example of this is the high jump. Now in the wild, sea lions would jump out of the water to avoid their predators. Here at the zoo, as I say, it's a great way of keeping our girls fit and healthy. And the target just gives our sea lions something to aim for. So Winnipeg has to touch her nose to the white ball on the end of the stick there. And again, because she's done the behaviour correctly, she will get some nice tasty fish for doing so. You'll also notice that Kate has a whistle in her mouth. Now this whistle is known as a bridge. It works in exactly the same way as a clicker if you clicker train your dog at home. The reason it's called the bridge is because it bridges the gap between Winnipeg doing the correct behaviour and Kate being able to reward her. Because of course sometimes there is a period of delay. For example, with the high jump, the exact moment that Winnie's doing the behaviour correctly is when her nose makes contact with the target. Of course, at that exact moment in time, it's a bit too difficult to feed her. So instead, we blow the whistle. This communicates to Winnie she's done the behaviour correctly and she'll soon be fed. So it's a very positive noise and it tells the sea lions, well done, done this right and you'll soon be fed for it. Now you may well be familiar with the fact that we dive here at Colchester Zoo. We don't use chlorine in our pool, instead it's salt water, but we do scuba dive almost every day between March and November to remove algae that grows from the windows and the tunnel. We've, uh, over the last few years, actually trained our sea lions to take part in the diving with us. Now this means that when you come to the zoo, our sea lions will never be off show, we can keep them out in the pool, and you might even get the luxury of seeing the divers and the sea lions in the pool at exactly the same time. Now this was a whole new form of training for our sea lions because rather than interact with the divers, we wanted them to ignore the divers. So we started this off with a little bit of A to B targeting. This meant that we had one trainer on the beach, one trainer on the other side of the pool, the sea lion in the middle, and we just got the sea lion to go from one trainer to the other, ignoring the diver. This also helped desensitize the sea lions because of course having divers in the water was unusual for them. A lot of dive equipment is very brightly colored, while sea lions don't see in colour, they do see in shades. So all these bright yellow tanks and bright blue fins, you have to make sure the sea lions were comfortable and confident around these items. And of course also when divers are underwater, they make all sorts of noises. If you're inflating or deflating your BCD, which is your buoyancy control device, you can get hissing of air. Of course every time they breathe out, you get the bubbles move through the water. So we had to make sure that the sea lions were happy and comfortable. And of course, we're ignoring the divers so that we can get on with our work and they can enjoy their training sessions. 
Another very important safety element when it came to training the sea lions to be in the water with divers was what we call a recall. Now a recall is how we can get the sea lions out of the pool and into the nursery area as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's very important when you do a recall that you use something nice and loud so the sea lions can hear you no matter where they are in the pool. In the case of uh, Kate at the moment, you can see the recall is a lovely loud school bell. So once Winnipeg hears that bell, she's very happy to follow Kate into the nursery area <laughs> where she will then get a humongous amount of fish as a huge reward. So this is how we can ensure that we can get our sea lions off show as quickly and as safely as possible, should we ever need to. And they're happy to comply because at the end of that, they're going to get a huge bowl of fish. Now once we've moved on from the dive training, we then took things even one step further and our trainers entered into the watery world along with our sea lions. So this is a whole new element of training yet again because the trainers are now in the water working very closely with the sea lions. Now if you think back to the whistle and the bridge that we mentioned earlier on, you might notice that Kate doesn't use it for every behaviour. Once a behaviour is fairly well trained, it's not necessary to bridge them all the time. But in terms of the water work, this is incredibly new for the sea lions and also the delay between the sea lions doing the correct behaviour and Kate being able to feed them is quite large. And the reason that there's quite a large delay is because we never feed our sea lions in the water with the trainers. Again, for a safety precaution, it's important that both sea lion and trainer are out of the water before the sea lion gets that fishy reward. So this will hopefully prevent any future problems. But of course it does mean that Winnipeg will do the correct behaviour, she'll hear the whistle, she knows she's doing things right, but at the end of it, she does have to come out of the water and back up onto the beach along with her trainer in order to get that nice tasty food. So to tell you about some of the behaviours that you are seeing at the moment, well that was a little bit of porpoising. Now porpoising is a natural behaviour, so it's not something we've had to train the sea lions how to do from scratch, but we have linked it yet again to a visual signal. So Kate extending her arm out above the surface is asking Winnipeg to porpoise, and in the wild sea lions will do this behaviour for fun, but they will also do it as a way of evading and avoiding their predators, which as I mentioned before, things like killer whales and great white sharks. And again, you can probably hear it a bit easier now, but that very important whistle being blown. And the exact moment that Winnipeg is arched over the water surface is when she's doing the behaviour correctly. Once she's finished the behaviour, you can see she brings her trainer back to the beach, and in return she gets that nice tasty reward of fish. So once again, positive reinforcement. And if you think right back to the very beginning when we saw fetch and toy retrieval, well, this is why that training and that fun and interaction of positive uh, training is so crucial because, of course, those sea lions do have to know and trust us because we're entering their environment. Now, we are going to uh, finish things off with a little bit of new training that we're doing. Now, this is uh, so far relatively unseen, this next behaviour that you're about to see. And for this, Kate will have to be on her dive mask because she does need to be able to see Winnipeg under the water. So this is a bit of a grand finale. This is a behaviour that we're training called the hurdle. Now we originally started training this once again using a target, asking Winnipeg to follow a target over the hurdle stick. We've now moved on, we've gone away with the target. Under the hurdle stick we have placed Kate. And fingers crossed you're about to see our hurdle behaviour for the first time here at Colchester Zoo. So watch very closely and you should see a lovely porpoise. Here she comes over her trainer and there's the whistle. And I think that deserves a big round of applause. Winnipeg's done a superb job today. But that's all you 